This is in fact not an exhaustive list, this is just a list of clinical trials going on right now uh, in the space. These are studies that are looking at efficacy outcomes primarily, but what I also want to mention to you all is, is that what's equally, if not more important, is the safety and the toxicity studies that are also starting up and going on. For example, we've got uh, a need to look at abuse liability of the serotonergic psychedelics and MDMA. The available evidence that we have gives us very good reasons to believe that the abuse liability is, is, is very low. Uh, nonetheless, that does need to be carefully, comprehensively, and thoroughly characterized. And that's going to be required by the FDA, uh, that being the area of abuse liability. The other area I want to mention is the uh, area of what's called flashbacks, or in the DSM-5-TR is called hallucinogen perse persisting perception disorder, HPPD. There is a need to better characterize how common this is. It doesn't appear to be very common at all, but it does occur. And so in addition to the safety around abuse liability, we, we're, we're, we feel confident that's not going to be a deal breaker, but it needs to be studied. We also need to better characterize HPPD risk in people who have uh, been deemed eligible for these types of treatments. And then finally, one other point I want to leave you with is cardiac valvulopathy. How do we get into cardiac valves and psychedelics? Well, the serotonergic psychedelics, and to some extent MDMA, what they share in common is they increase serotonin activity. Now, we have 15, 15 serotonin receptors we have 15 receptors that are in seven different categories or families. And one of the better characterized families is the 5-HT2. Remember I said that the receptor for psilocybin and LSD is 5-HT2A? That's what mediates the psychedelic effect, but we're not sure if that mediates the antidepressant effect or not. It might, it might not, we don't know. We're still looking at it. Well, there's another receptor called the 5-HT2B receptor. And the 5-HT2B receptor is in many tissues. One of the areas the 5-HT2B receptor is located is in the cardiac valves. Not only in the valve, but below the valve, the so-called subvalvular apparatus. Now, someone might be wondering, why should I care about 5-HT2B? My goodness. Well, 5-HT2B receptors, when they are stimulated by serotonin, increase fibrotic activity in the valve. So if you have too much serotonin, that could be an issue. Now when this first occurred is in people who had tumors that produce serotonin called carcinoid tumors. People who have carcinoid tumors have to be repeatedly evaluated with an echo to make sure they don't have a cardiac valvulopathy, which then leads to regurgitant blood flow in pulmonary hypertension. In the 60s, the first cases of drug-induced cardiac valvulopathy appeared. Many of you in the room might know the drug pergolide. It's used in Parkinson's. Or the drug cabergoline, which I still use on occasion to treat prolactin. We also have the medication called fenfluramine. Many of you have heard of fenfluramine, and many may have heard of what's called fenfen. Fenfen was fenfluramine fentermine. That was a drug for weight loss, not as good as uh, Ozempic, but uh, fenfen uh, was taken off the market because fenfluramine's metabolite, norfenfluramine, stimulates the cardiac valves. So psilocybin, psilocin, LSD, and the metabolite of MDMA called MDMA, MDA bind to the 5-HT2B receptor. So what we need to do is sort out is that a fact that's not clinically meaningful or is that a fact that could be clinically meaningful. So the FDA has come out recently and said 
anyone who has cardiac valvular disease or pulmonary hypertension should not be in any clinical studies with any psychedelic until we know more about this. So in addition to the efficacy, which is looking very hopeful, very exciting, hopefully measured, we also need to keep a close eye and measure carefully some of the aspects around the abuse liability. We're reassured, but we need to do this properly. We need to look at aspects around HPPD and also cardiac valvular, and it's going to be a very interesting time. It's all part of the package and in bringing this together.